Scout, a vehicle with deep ties right here to the Summit City, is being reborn. It's a new design that features an electric engine, but pays homage to the truck's deep Fort Wayne roots. For Scout enthusiasts like Ryan Duvall, that sound, music to his ears, and learning his beloved vehicle is being relaunched is like a dream come true. All the years that I've been had a scout or been involved with scouts, everyone's talked about someday someone needs to make one again. And it seems the talk is over. Volkswagen making the scout again set for a 2026 relaunch. It's something that I never thought would really happen, but then it became pretty real pretty quick. And, you know, of course, there's some trepidation there because how do you redo an American icon like this. A question that will be answered during an unveiling in Tennessee where the next generation Scout will be built. Duval says the driving force behind the Scout's rebirth first turned to Fort Wayne for inspiration. He brought his team down here and um, we gave him his first lesson on the Scout and I was impressed from the beginning that A, he chose Fort Wayne, wanted to learn the history, but also at the way he was with me the day he was here and the attention to detail, the stories he wanted to hear. The company even handpicked four Fort Wayne area residents with ties to the scout to be at the unveiling, including a former international harvester, designer, and a clay modeler who helped design the original scouts. How many designer guys from that you know of? That well, from, from the scout era, there's, there's virtually no one, really. That's Dave Dickmeyer on the left and Dick Hatch on the driver's side of this 1962 Scout 80. After spending decades with International Harvester, the duo, now freshly in their 80s, had their hands in the new vehicle's design as well. The brand character of a scout should always look, it should always look like a scout. You should know it's a scout by its appearance. With someone as capable and powerful as Volkswagen uh, behind it, there's uh, no reason why it shouldn't be a great success. It, it, it really can go all the way and, and happen uh, far beyond anything we ever would have imagined. And to understand the Summit City's scout obsession, you'll need to rewind to the Times documented in this PBS piece titled Truck Town, a history of international forester in Fort Wayne. It's a story now Fort Wayne Deputy Mayor Carl Bandemir recalls fondly. I was, I was the economic development director for the city of Fort Wayne back then. And holding that job title when the scout saga first unfolded put him in the center of it all. I guess kind of an exciting time when you look back upon it because it was the time when when uh, first Scout left and then International Harvester left and then on the heels of that General Motors came to Fort Wayne so that was all kind of happened in that uh, in that term that I was there. Vandermeer says he vividly recalls the night a businessman from Texas offered to buy the Scout plant on the condition he would get tax breaks and incentives from the city while using non-union workers. But the council needed to approve it, and local UAW members made their opinion known. The whole room all of a sudden uh, was surrounded by UAW workers, all in blue T-shirts with UAW across there. The intimidation factor that they had upon city council was enough to defeat the defeat the uh, the uh, the ordinance, the resolution to approve the bonds for the sale. So so he could buy he could buy he could buy harvester he could buy the scout plant. And for decades, it was the end of Fort Wayne's connection to the scout. As far as what's next, we'll all find out very soon. Now that new scout will be unveiled online for those who can't make it to Tennessee for the event. It's happening at 4 Eastern time tomorrow afternoon. There'll be a link to the website to see it on our website at WFFT.com.